India wants fifth generation power, China is already exporting leverage, and the United States is quietly deciding who waits and who never gets called. On paper, India looks unstoppable population, economy, ambition, alliances. But air power doesn't run on ambition. It runs on factories, engines, supply chains, and honestly, time. And right now, time is not on India's side. This story isn't about which jet is faster. It's about who can actually build modern power, at scale, without permission. Part 1. The Promise Trap Let's start with the promise. For years, India's future air power has lived just over the horizon. Next upgrade, next variant, next deal. The indigenous light combat aircraft was meant to be a turning point proof that India could design, produce, and sustain its own fighters. Instead, decades later, production remains limited, costs remain high, and key systems still come from abroad. Engines, radars, fire control systems, all external. That creates a problem most discussions avoid. A jet you don't fully control is not truly yours especially in a crisis. Because modern air forces don't fail in combat first. They fail in logistics. Part 2. The Real Bottleneck Engines and Scale Fighter jets are often compared by speed, stealth, or weapons. But the real separator is far less glamorous. Engines. If you can't build them reliably, in volume, and without foreign approvals, your air force becomes hostage to geopolitics. India's current fighter fleet depends heavily on foreign engine supply chains, many of them American or European. Those supply chains are already under strain, not because of India alone, but because global aerospace manufacturing is stretched thin. Skilled labor shortages, component bottlenecks, rare earth dependencies, competing priorities. When production capacity tightens, suppliers don't distribute equally. They prioritize themselves and their closest allies. Money doesn't always fix that. Time almost never does. Part 3. The F-35 Illusion This is where the F-35 enters the conversation. On paper, it solves everything. Stealth, sensors, networked warfare, prestige. In reality, the F-35 is not a product you simply buy. It's a system you're allowed into. Access depends on alignment, trust, long-term commitments, and, most importantly, delivery slots that are already full years in advance. Even established allies wait. Some wait a very long time. So when the F-35 is discussed as a near-term solution, it distracts from a harder truth. It doesn't solve India's manufacturing dependence. It deepens it, and it doesn't arrive quickly enough to close existing gaps. Now, shift your attention west. Egypt doesn't really dominate headlines in aerospace discussions, but its recent choices matter far beyond its borders. Instead of waiting for Western approvals, export limitations, or, you know, modified configurations, Egypt quietly diversified. And when deliveries arrived, the announcement came after, not before. That detail actually matters, because it signals confidence in delivery, not just aspiration. More importantly, Egypt didn't just buy aircraft. It bought a relationship that came with fewer political conditions on how the equipment could be used. In regions where air power must be reliable, not just symbolic, that distinction really carries weight. There's an uncomfortable reality in modern arms sales. Western systems are often excellent, but honestly, they come with oversight, usage restrictions, upgrade permissions, ammunition constraints. That's not a flaw. It's a feature. For some countries, that's acceptable. For others, especially those near volatile borders, it's a strategic risk. When aircraft availability, missile stocks, or software access can be influenced externally, planning becomes, well, uncertain. That uncertainty shapes doctrine long before the first shot is fired. China's advantage in this space isn't just technology, it's trajectory. While others debated, China standardized. While others optimized for prestige projects, China focused on iteration. Fourth-generation fighters became testbeds, 
Test beds became platforms. Platforms became export ready systems. Engines followed the same path, imperfect, then improved, then domestically controlled. This didn't happen overnight. It happened through scale, patience, and a kind of relentless manufacturing focus. The result is not perfection, it's reliability. And reliability is what smaller and mid-sized powers are, more and more, actually buying. Part 7. The Psychology of Air Shows versus Reality You know, air shows are deceptive, paint schemes change, variants are announced, and capabilities are implied. But honestly, air power is proven on runways, not stages. The gap between prototype and mass deployment is where most programs stumble. That gap is invisible to the public, but painfully obvious to Air Force planners. What really matters is sortie generation, maintenance hours, spare parts availability, and pilot training continuity. These are manufacturing problems, not marketing ones. Part 8. India's Strategic Dilemma India now faces a difficult reality. Its ambitions are justified, and its strategic position demands strength. But its industrial base has not yet caught up to its geopolitical role. That doesn't mean failure. It means mismatch. Bridging that gap requires brutal prioritization. Fewer slogans, more factories, and longer timelines accepted honestly. Without that shift, India risks remaining dependent at precisely the moment autonomy matters most. Part 9. What this means for the future. This isn't about choosing sides. It's about understanding a global transition. Air power is moving away from singular best platforms and toward ecosystems that can be built, sustained, and replaced without interruption. Countries that control those ecosystems gain leverage far beyond the battlefield. Those that don't must negotiate for it. And negotiation is not strength. Ending takeaway. Why this matters now. The next decade won't be decided by who unveils the most advanced jet. It will be decided by who can build it, fuel it, arm it, repair it, and replace losses, without asking permission. That's the real contest unfolding above the clouds, and it's already reshaping alliances on the ground.